guys. Um, we're just over at On the Wallaby Lodge, which is my little hostel up in Yungaburra, um, where, if you don't know, we're 75 kilometres away from Cairns, up on the Atherton Tablelands, and just a beautiful day, it's nice and cool, not as humid and sticky as Cairns, and um, we've been working on a project um, with this hostel where we're trying to reinvent it, and we're trying to be the greenest hostel in the world, and I just wanted to run you through what we've done so far, so um, come and have a look at this. So we wanted to start with the front of the building and then just work our way through with what we've changed. So um, we've got some friends of ours who run an Aboriginal cultural um, tour. And so we wanted to be able to help them and help ourselves by um, sharing that with them. So what we got them to do was to come out the front of the hostel straight away and just see what they could share with us. So, so we're just inside the entrance for, for On the Wallaby Lodge. Uh, and we've sort of called this little area here our green room, so obviously we've got some nice plants here and this is about our Green Wally project um, that we want to get out there. So this is just an overview of the whole lodge. So um, first of all we're in an area where we can show you where our solar is. So we've got a 6 kilowatt solar system. Um, it's probably where we started off and where the main ideas came from. Um, and then we thought, well, if we're going to produce power during the day, we're not really that busy here during the day and we need something to sustain ourselves through night. So we became the first commercial business in Australia to actually get uh, batteries. So we've got M-phase batteries that we're able to um, store uh, any excess power during the night. And um, at the moment it gets us through. Um, I would like to buy a couple more batteries, but um, all in good time, I suppose. Um, this is on our website as well, so you can always um, refer to it if you need to, but there's five main types um, of areas where we've decided to, to hit first, and, and, and the first one is energy, obviously, so we've just spoken to you about the solar and the batteries, um, and then waste and materials, which I'm going to walk you through out the back, which is really just our recycling and composting that we're trying to do. Um, water is our third one and that's just mindful usage of the water and also storing rainwater where we were able to. Um, and then we've also got uh, place making, so just making people feel comfortable in here and also through that comfort hoping that they'll join with us um, in recycling or using water wisely or power wisely or whatever comes into it. And, and the last one was just community and that was just connecting with and supporting them. So. Um, we want to make sure that we buy local, we hire local. Um, out here, um, our showers and toilets are on the other side, but we just have our recycling bins here. It's called Pretty Obvious. Um, we have a can crusher, recycle plastic bags, and just give people the information about what we're doing up at the lodge here. Um, in here, we're trying to be as energy efficient as possible with both water and power. So we've installed uh, timers on the toilets and timers on the showers as well. It just gives people an indicator on how much water they're using and how long they're showering for. Um, we've got the pee and the poo flush on all our toilets, water saving heads, and on the flip mixes as well, water saving heads on there, so just being efficient. So we're just down in the laundry area at the moment. We've got uh, washers and dryers. Um, and we've also got our clothesline on the other side, so we try and use the clothesline as much as possible because we're in the tableland, so it's beautiful sunny weather. Um, we also wanted to be able to do more with our wastewater, but we can't do anything with shower water or uh, toilet water, obviously, because that's black water, and we're in a community here in Yungaburra. So we did the best we could with grey water. So we can take the grey water from our washing machines, uh, and we can use it on our property to uh, irrigate all the gardens that we have here. So I'll show you that too. So we're taking all our washing machine water, um, and it pumps down through here and into our grey water system. So we've got a big pit under here, which stores it, it's got a float lever on it, and when it gets to a certain level, it just pumps water out into our garden. So um, we've got irrigation lines that run up and down the whole backyard, um, and they spill through to the side, and actually out to the front of the yard where we had the, uh, the, the planting for the Aboriginal cultural trees as well. So um, we're very lucky to have it. Um, we also store our water, so behind all this beautiful passion fruit underneath here, um, we're collecting rainwater, runs off the roof here, which is our, uh, which is three quarters of our whole roof capacity, fills up that, um, and then we have beautiful rainwater as well as passion fruit. Um, and then just here we've um, got our fountain of youth. So at any stage, all our customers, we don't sell water bottles, we have recycling. Um, and you can just turn it off and uh, 
I'm only 22 years old after I drink this, so it's pretty good. Oh, that's good stuff, I tell you. So we're just in the back garden where we've just planted all our edibles. Um, we've got a, a, a spice garden through here, we like to call it. So we've got like Thai coriander and onions and shallots and chives and, and parsley and rosemary and basil and we'll take all those things during the days and we put them inside the kitchen so people can actually use them in their cooking um, and it's quite exciting for people to be able to pick those things from a garden because a lot of people wouldn't get that perspective anywhere else. Um, on my right we've got our um, edible fruit trees so we've just tried to get a few um, weird and exciting little fruits like miracle fruit um, or mulberries or um, just something to be a little bit different a little bit quirky anyway so yeah. So just an extension to our um, herb garden as well. We planted a uh, native bush that attracts our native bees. And there's a lot of hype at the moment with Airbnb. So um, we thought we'd have an Airbnb for our bees. And so we have our B&B um, and a cute little home. And we're going to try and produce some natural honey out of that one day if we can. So fingers crossed. Um, if you just have a look out the back here, we've got an old bathtub that we've reused as well. And we've got our worm farm in there, so we're always mixing our soil up and keeping fresh soil. And then if we move over here, we've got our um, compost bays um, that we're storing all our food waste out of. Um, and we have a storage side for it as well, so um, that's all our composting done. Yep. Just for the last part of what we're doing in the lodge here, this is our other edible garden. Um, it's just got stuff that we would use in our salads when we cook. Um, and just some special stuff, we've got some basil and chilies and... Um, some dill as well just to finish it off uh, and we've got a beautiful fire pit out here just to enjoy the ambience at night because um, we do have the best stars in the world up in the afternoon tablelands. So that's about all we have to tell you about. We just wanted you to um, see what we were doing here. We are self-proclaimed the greenest hostel in the world and we would love any feedback to help that come to fruition. Um, oh, I forgot about that shed out the back here. This is actually made from my best mate's house. Um, it was demolished and so we recycled it and we turned it into this beautiful outdoor area. But um, I suppose the best way that you can come and understand what we're trying to do here is to come up and stay in Yungaburra, come and see the area and um, live the dream. Thanks for watching.